Hi, my name is Marcin Mowat and I'm the Global Community Director at CD Project Red. Everything started, um, I think, right after the release of Cyberpunk 2077, even though I vaguely remember having brief thoughts about doing something when it comes to music and offering aspiring composers to actually take part in um, an activity that we would organize quite a bit earlier than that. Hello everyone, I'm Amelia, I'm a senior community manager here at CD Projekt Red. So uh, we, we very often meet with our team to brainstorm the ideas, what we can do for our community. We had pretty much everything. We had a PC modding contest, we had art contest, we had screenshot contest for like at least, I think once a year. Uh, so we tried to figure out what we didn't do so far. And you know, you know, I think the first idea was like, we should do something that our community loves about our games, and this is music. Hi, I'm Caroline. I've been with CD Projekt Red for roughly five years at this point, and I'm leading the international community team. A question at least that I know that I'm asking myself and that some of my colleagues also ask themselves is which part of our community haven't we done something for yet? We quickly came to the to the conclusion that actually music is extremely important for Cyberpunk 2077 and also for the whole Cyberpunk genre, if you think about it. And we thought that it would be great to actually give something back to the music community because people keep sending us covers, they keep sending us songs that they made that reminded them of Cyberpunk. And we wanted to do something that kind of pays into that. And from there, actually, it was a lot of, can we actually do that? How would we actually do that? And then from there it grew, it grew. We involved different departments. We talked to colleagues from other teams. And here we are. A couple of years ago, back in Witcher 3 times, 2015, we um, organized a music contest, but it was um, a bit of a different animal, so to speak, because it didn't offer um, that extra feature that we um, implemented right now, which is the game integration, which we really wanted to do um, this time around. So um, even though we did it back then, right now we started thinking how we can make it better, how we can improve it, how we can expand it. We were like, okay, so maybe we should do a radio station that, you know, community can create and, you know, submit their own music and, you know, share their passion about music, about our game, cyberpunk, and, you know, merge it together. And the best price for it would be if we could put them in a game. And I think that was the, the start that we um, that we had. Then we met with P.T. Adamczuk, with Przybyłowicz, uh, with various teams inside uh, of the company to figure out what's possible, what's not. And we were like, okay, so, you know, let's go for it. Let's make it big, let's make it happen. Let's make everyone super excited, just like we were during the brainstorming um, about it. And I think, when we, you know, when we talked about so who could be, you know, the DJ, if we should have a DJ, or maybe it should be just like, you know, plain radio station, you know, ideas keep coming um, from the beginning and it was just great. It was just super overwhelming to see how, you know, our teams were brought together to brainstorm those ideas to, you know, talk about or maybe we should do this, maybe we should do that, or maybe we can add this here in the game, or maybe we should do, you know, this piece of, piece of contest uh, here, or maybe put here something from, from the game in here and merge it all together. So it was just like mind blowing really when, you know, when we start working on this. And I think community loved it. I know their uh, reaction to the contest was like super positive. We got like hundreds of entries during the first day. Uh, so it was, you know, it was nice to see that, you know, people appreci appreciated what we did for them. So it's really cool. So um, the launch of the contest, that was something that obviously we were excited for, for many reasons. Um, what we didn't anticipate though, I believe, was the scale of the reception and the number of entries we received. Yeah, I think the reception to the contest was super humbling and super great to see because people were extremely excited. We got so many questions from all around the world, actually, of people asking for how it will work, um, if they can send us more songs, if they have to send it as the whole band, if they can. Like, it was incredible and it was almost overwhelming. I'm saying almost because then when it came to the selection process, that's when it actually became overwhelming. Right off the bat, we started getting many, many submissions. And um, I think it was hundreds in the first weeks. And then over the whole duration of the contest, it ended up being thousands. And our contest team is a handful of people, right? Like, it's not that we have a team of 
50 people going through all the tracks, a small, smallish team. So we actually went through all the songs and we made sure, okay, we have technical requirements. So we tried going through, okay, who is actually fulfilling them? But then you have to go through all the songs again. And if you have thousands of them and you want to do it justice, that's a lot of time. Like I cannot tell you how much because I didn't track it, but we're talking like hundreds of hours of work time. So that was a bit of a challenge, but an exciting one and definitely Mm, something that made us feel, feel really, really good because, um, you know, when you're like, hearing um, the creations coming from the community, from people who are into the game, into the world, into the lore, and actually having them put, you know, pieces of themselves into something they create, and then you listen to that, you, you, you try to understand their emotions, their, their, their thoughts, the, the creative process behind it, that was something that was really amazing, and I think um, none of us regret those hours upon hours of spending you know when we listen to all those tracks um, so that was definitely a biggest surprise um, also a challenge but a very very positive one i think the general challenge was to pick the best songs uh, you know everyone has different taste in music so everyone had the best uh, their idea for the best track a bit different uh, myself i love rock music so for me everything rocky with guitar was on point and also scream cyberpunk and during the process i kept a folder for myself with all the songs that i found super cool and I actually played them on repeat for myself for like the whole months of like the selection process and i didn't get annoyed which for me is actually like a good sign that a song is really good if i can just listen to it the whole time it was basically just going through all of it making sure that we have different genres like we got every genre on the planet that you can think about. K-pop, like hip-hop, um, even pop music, in, you know, in the, uh, in the submission. So, yeah, the biggest challenge was to pick the best from the best. Uh, and, you know, I think everyone would struggle with that um, the way we did. We were basically really surprised with the quality of the entries. Hi, I'm P.T. Adamczyk. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Hi, I'm P.T. Adamczyk. I work as a senior in-house composer at the Project Red. We thought that we'll be listening to some amateurish stuff for days, and it turned out a lot of them were literally like the tracks we already had in the radio. And what we were looking for is, I think Marcin and I both have a pretty good understanding of what Night City sounds like at this time. So it wasn't a very particular set of rules that we were following. It was really a vibe thing. We were also looking for stuff that would work well together and would create sort of an identity for the station. Um, and we're also looking for stuff that's equally, on one hand, sounds like Night City, but you didn't hear that in Night City in the base game. So all those things combined, I think, influenced our decision making. Hi, this is Marcin Przybyłowicz, music director at CD Projekt Red. I'm happy to see you again. Our vision was adding additional sound palette to the Night City. Uh, the idea was to keep it as an underground broadcast, uh, just as Ash herself would air it from her van. Um, compared to all the other playlists we have uh, in Cyberpunk so far, uh, Growl FM feels pretty special because it draws from several different styles, genres and inspirations, just like as citizens of Night City come from different places. And given the fact that citizens of Dogtown are actually runaways or even refugees from the base Night City, uh, they obviously took their music with them and that's what we can actually hear in Growl FM. Well, the key we actually used uh, with the whole submissions process uh, to the Growl FM was exactly the same uh, as we used in base game, uh, which is basically one word. The music has to have its own attitude. It, it, you need to feel that music punches you in the teeth, takes your money and walks away. And you know, like we picked those 14 artists and I cannot, you know, wait for you guys to, to actually hear those, those tracks and see the lyrics videos that we prepared. And I'm really excited for you guys to meet the artists behind the music in Growl FM contest. Hey, I'm Ty McGrath. And I'm Just Cosplay Sings. And we're the creators of the song Afterlife. Yay! The aspect of the game and the franchise that struck to me the most is actually the human 
aspect of it. I know that cyberpunk is built in a universe with a lot of tech. It's where humans humans are bordering to machines. They mod themselves, they become semi-machines, they go cyber psychosis and so on and so forth. But what draws me to it when writing the song is the emotion, the raw human emotion part of it, the passion, the anger, the intensity, the hate, the love. Um, and that's kind of what we built uh, the song around. Yeah. Um for me personally, I'm, I'm not gonna lie. As I was writing the song, I was picturing like a sad neon lit uh, gentleman's club, <laughs> basically. Um, <laughs> you'll see what I mean. Like if, if you listen to the song, you'll you'll see it. It has, for lack of a better way of putting it, like sad stripper vibes, I guess. Um, oh yeah. yeah. So yeah, I was just like, like picturing <laughs> like an in-game club, like the entire time I was writing the song. Yeah, so if you go into a gentleman's club and you hear the song playing, you can thank us. <laughs> All right. Hi. Hi. We're Skin on Flesh, and we will be answering some questions that CD Project Red sent to us. So let's go. Yeah. <laughs> the lyrics are about being, I guess, choking all the time on your own problems and your concerns that you forget about everything around you and also about yourself. So you focus more on these problems and everything explodes. And then the instincts of, of adrenaline and, and survival kicks in and then that's what saves you from yourself and from other things around you. Yeah, just knowing that maybe your name is going to be immortalized forever in a video game and your name is going to appear on the credits and it's really fucking cool. And also knowing that maybe we might have shared credits with Keanu Reeves, but that was also <laughs> very, very fucking uh, cool. Yay. <laughs> Aside from my own music, um, most of the songs I write are actually intended for K-pop artists. So I was really excited to work with Shunjae on something where, you know, we can basically do whatever the hell we want. We have done some songs in the past before, but we were always writing with another artist in mind. So we had some boundaries to be within and some rules to follow. Uh, and for this cyberpunk song, we basically had full freedom on the creativity behind the song and almost no limits on how far we could go with it. So that was really refreshing for me. If I was to do a music gig with any cyberpunk musician, I would probably want it to be IBD or IBDY. I'm not really sure how it's pronounced, but uh, Ratboy is the real band behind it really like the raw sound of the band and the, the energy that they have as well as the combination between punk rock and hip-hop it sounds amazing for me i think i'd have to pick point break candy um i very much love the craziness of hole in the sun and i would kill to make something that like matches that energy i don't i don't know if i could do it but it would be fun to try so hello I'm Nile. Oscar, Petya, Amy, Val, and we are Saint Aurora. Yes, we are. And um, for me, when I played the game originally, I was really inspired by, uh, or I was thinking more of the role of church and religions in in the cyberpunk world, the dystopian world, and do people still believe? And what what's the deal with religions? Because I'm not that much of a religious person myself, so I was thinking. Is it still out there? Yes. So we had this, we had this, same, some lyrics about church and religion, and we had the riff, and then we started working things out. And when I showed the lyrics to Amy, he was like, "Okay, I got a riff that fits, like, exactly there." So it's like, "Okay, we got this." Like, <laughs> originally the the tempo was really much lower for for, for what I thought about for the uh, for the lyrics. So it was like breaking something beautiful, but it ended up being like. But, 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 but I gave me, and I was as the drummer, I was like, absolutely fucking not. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Hi, Chumbas. This is Julian and Dee from Red Dead Roadkill. Hi, it's Dee here. Even if I have to admit that I'm more of a casual gamer, I was very fascinated by the large open world. You know, everywhere you go, something happens and it's incredibly alive. You really feel like you're a part of it. And this helped us a lot to immerse ourselves into this world and to create something of our own from it. I received an email Congratulations, you have won, blah, 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 blah. And I thought, yeah, spam. Um, but I'm glad I read it again. 
about five times till slowly the information sinked in and I was absolutely stunned. Somehow I still don't believe it, but maybe I will when I take V and take a drive through Night City in September and listen to Red Dead Roadkill. We are so happy to be part of this world. It's so exciting. And uh, guys, what can I say? See you in Night City. Bye. Hello, uh, my name is Maria and I am a quest designer at CD Projekt Red. Uh, and my role in creating RAL FM started when uh, our community team approached me uh, with this idea to incorporate um, a radio station that consists of fan-made music from our uh, community contest and a speaker uh, voiced by Sasha Gray. So. Uh, as a narrative uh, owner of all the radio-related uh, content in our game, uh, my responsibility when we are adding new radio stations can be uh, kind of split into these two areas. Uh, making sure that the radio fits into the game and making sure it stands out, that it has something special about it uh, in terms of uh, the in-game uh, implementation uh, that would make it stand out from other radio stations. For me, uh, the first step was uh, to provide a sort of framework uh, for uh, our, our community team of how uh, radio speakers are implemented in Cyberpunk. Uh, that means, uh, for instance, how, uh, how do they usually interact with their listeners? Uh, what is the usual flow of their programming? Uh, or even uh, what sort of logical conditions can we, uh, can we use to implement uh, that content? Uh, imagine, like, is it possible for uh, the radio speaker to comment on the weather that the players can currently observe, that sort of thing. Uh, so I provided a sort of foundation for, uh, for the rest of uh, the Growl.fm content to be built on. Uh, the next step was uh, for me to sort of grasp what's, uh, what's the core, what's the heart of uh, Growl.fm. What makes it special? Uh, so for me as a narrative designer, uh, one of the key aspects of bringing my quest to life is uh, the uh, reactivity. So um, imagine as a player, for me at least, uh, when I see that the world around me um, is somehow influenced by my choices, by the decisions I'm making, but also if there are events in the world that bear some sort of meaning to me as a player, as V, for instance, uh, the magic happens when I can see that other characters are also influenced by those, can, can make some sort of comment. So it was very important uh, to make sure that Ash uh, ju does just that, that Ash is reacting to uh, either players' actions or important events. But now to make sure that, um, that Ash makes sense uh, as a character, that she's a complex, consistent person, we had to uh, have, a, have a good feeling of uh, how would she uh, feel about certain things, like what, um, what would catch her attention. The other half is, of course, uh, the music created by our great fans. Uh, and here, well, first of all, uh, I was very excited uh, to hear about this idea uh, of incorporating fan-made content into the game. Uh, 
that's that's such a lovely tribute to the relationship we have with uh, our players, like between the devs and the players. Uh, you know, they're always somewhere in our hearts, in our heads, when we are creating uh, the game. So uh, to have their stuff in turn show up in our content, that's just a very magical moment uh, for us devs. It was very important for us uh, to, uh, it was very important for me to make sure that uh, the artists uh, can get as much ex exposition and uh, visibility as possible. Uh, so uh, we came up with this idea to uh, create those mini biographies for them, for the players to find somewhere in Night City. Uh, think of it as just stories, backstories for each of the artists, each of their alter egos in 2077. Uh, and to make sure that uh, those uh, those backstories uh, and those like mini biographies are um, consistent with how these artists see themselves uh, in our current day, I prepared a questionnaire, a set of a set of questions to kind of um, establish what would their uh, imaginary life in uh, in Night City be. Uh, and I have to say that for me, one of the most moving moments uh, of developing Rolafam. Uh, was actually reading through uh, the, the responses they sent in because, you know, for me uh, as a narrative designer uh, it just caught me off guard how incredibly rich and uh, well-developed those stories were. Uh, it was very clear that uh, all of the contestants uh, were completely immersed in in our world and it felt like such a such an incredible tribute to to our work as uh, as storytellers作る音楽がすごく好きだからナイトシティでも音楽を作ってると思います。ただ自分は洋唱からクラシックとピアノに触れて育ってきたので、ナイトシティだとDJとかギターとかになって音楽性がもしかしたら攻撃的にはなってるかな
I first heard SI's music through the SoundCloud, and he was making energetic tracks with oriental emotions in it. So I reached out through social media, and we decided to make a track together. Uh, basically, it's a gaming style of dubstep, and also there is a uh, Asian flavor melodies, and you will get more immersed when you're looking at the nice view of nice city. And personally, it's gonna be a good theme for Arasaka Tower, I think. We had an image of Cyber City with Oriental culture in it. And it's so exciting that the track could be used where it should be. All right, so here we go. The game has a lot of action and one wrong move could literally end you. So basically that's, that's kind of how I took the approach. One wrong move or one wrong step could be the last step or, you know, something like that. And if I'm in battle or if I'm in war and I'm going at somebody and shoot, all I'm trying to do is get a kill shot and get them out of the way. You know what I mean? So everybody's looking for a kill shot, you know, so they can keep pushing on in the game. You know what I mean? So yeah, I guess that's my process behind thinking of, I was thinking of something grungy, something hard, something impactful, something like that. And the word kill shot stood out to me, you know what I mean? So, yeah. How do I feel knowing that my track will be in Cyberpunk 2077? I feel excited, I'm blessed, a little anxious. I hope the community embraces it. Uh, Matt and the other community member songs, we worked hard on them. It's cool to think that, you know, years down the road, another generation of gamers discover cyberpunk and these songs for the first time and enjoy them then too. So it's exciting. Um, my track is about a solo's life. Uh, I took inspiration from V and David Martinez, Morgan Blackhand, just different characters you meet and tried to weave it into a story that I hope everybody enjoys and, and embraces. So yeah, that's what, that's what it's about. It's about a solo's life. That's about it. What's up, Pacifica? Got to thinking. Hey, so what if I gave my Dogtown dwellers something juicy to really sink their teeth into? Because I just jacked my own dish and set up shop right here on the toughest turf in all Night City. That's right, folks. Your girl Ash is primed to dispense some fresh new beats and Dogtown deeds every single day, especially for you. So crank that volume to the max and kick back my tunes as we got a whole lot cooking for you on the brand new 89.7 Growl FM. Uh, so Ash, our uh, roving pirate uh, radio personality, uh, was very much designed, I think, with Sasha Gray in mind. It's the character is sort of a distillation of Sasha Gray. Ah, I forgot to introduce myself. <laughs> I'm Boris Bogatz Murashkiewicz. Uh, I'm the director of English adaptations at CD Projekt Red. Uh, take the SNA off Sasha, you get Ash and Gray because she's kind of the unknown and the unknowable. She's uh, mm, socially aware, uh, has her agenda, uh, but ultimately is unknown. And that's hardly a stretch for somebody who is the most, arguably, the most sexually liberated woman in Hollywood. So Ash was very much up Sasha's alley, uh, fiercely independent, socially aware, uh, presence, uh, with a message that cuts through the bullshit. Um, and that's the kind of energy that Sasha brought to the role, brought to the booth. And it's the best thing that you can get from an actor, just spot on character specific energy. Although Sasha might be proud of the handful of Haitian Creole additions she made to a few of Ash's lines. I don't know if she's shown off her Haitian elsewhere offline, but she shows it off a little bit here in our game. I'm Alex. I'm a writer here at CD Project Red. Uh, and I work in the creative marketing writer's room. So um, usually when we're creating characters, we have like a blank slate and that is probably the hardest hurdle to get over. But luckily with, with Ash, um, we knew beforehand who was gonna step into the role of Ash. So we had a really good uh, jumping off point um, where we could go and uh, take a look at uh, Sasha's Twitch channels and like look through all of her videos and how she speaks. Um, so we looked at how she spoke and sort of her personality and we tried to marry it with a more cyberpunky character that you might find within our world. Uh, and yeah, 
So that's sort of like the baseline of how we found the character. And we took her, we took these lines, we married them together. And I think we hit a pretty good sort of middle ground between it being Sasha, but not quite Sasha, our sort of cyberpunk punky version of Sasha, which is of course called Ash in the game. It's almost more freeing when you don't have like the physicality to think about and like, because you know it's always gonna be a voice and so you don't have to get certain lines across where they need that extra oomph. But then on the flip side, you don't have the physicality and they say like communication is 70 plus percent non-verbal. So you take that out of the equation and you have to, I guess, try extra hard with getting across certain emotions when you know it's just gonna be a voice. And for me, that was like a hard thing that was kind of like just shooting in the dark until we got to the recording sessions and I actually got to hear her interpretation of the lines and yeah, Sasha like nailed everything and you can tell a lot of that physicality that you can't see, but was definitely happening when she was recording, it comes across with the voice and you can, you can kind of hear it. So at random times between the songs, um, she'll comment about things that are happening in the expansion uh, and in the base game. And these things can be anything from uh, just sort of like commentary on an event that's happened, on a mission that's happened and changed um, the, the status of the world, or like uh, she'll go on off on some like tangent, philosophizing about random things like fate or destiny or like nightmare that she had and she wants input from the community. Um, but the cool thing about these things is the content of them uh, kind of underscores some of the themes that are happening within the game uh, and some of the events that are happening and it helps sort of reinforce these ideas and uh, for an example, one of the one of the best examples, I think, or maybe one of the most obvious examples of it, is at one point in the game, there's gonna be a big choice coming in. Like our games are known for their choices, but in this expansion in particular, there's a really heavy choice um, that we have to make. I won't say anything else to avoid spoilers, but um, so when we're at this point in the game, which is kind of like the calm before the storm. If you happen to be driving around listening to Growl FM, Ash might start talking about a random story. Um, she'll recall a story her daddy told her when she was little, and then she will go into a her own personal rendition of Buridan's ass, the um, story of the donkey that didn't know whether to drink water or to eat hay, and then in the end, because it couldn't decide, it dies. Um, I promise the story is more fun than. than than that, that I just said. Uh, but yeah, so it's just like small things like that kind of like underline things like in this particular scenario, it's underlining the fact that you have to make a choice. It's gonna be difficult and it's coming, but you can't avoid it. Uh, my name is Alex. Uh, I'm a senior localization project manager here at CD Project. And uh, uh, right now I'm um, coordinating all our localization efforts uh, concerning Cyberpunk expansion Phantom Liberty. When we usually do uh, voiceover recordings, our studios uh, do the all heavy lifting because like we prepare just the script, uh, we prepare the list of talents and characters we, we need to record, and then we send it to studios and they do all the organization, like calling the talents, organizing the schedule, which is like very time consuming process, uh, paying uh, their fees, like actors fees, unions fees, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, with Sasha, it was quite the opposite. Uh, we uh, did all, all of this stuff. Uh, and the first challenge uh, for us was uh, her schedule because talents like Sasha, they always have a lot of other commitments. So we needed to uh, decide on the recording dates like very well in advance, uh, which is quite unusual. Uh, the other thing is um, 
her contract because like we spent a lot of time uh, talking with her, making sure that she's happy with it, like uh, talking about stuff like how many hours she can give us, can we have like a, a pickup session or whatever. Uh, and then uh, the other thing was actually her script uh, because like with Stannis, uh, with Stannis like Sasha, uh, we need to make sure that our script is like 100% ready before we actually go to the recording. So we needed like to review it, edit it, double check, triple check. And of course it like took a lot of time. So like, for example, we started to work on her script uh, in early September. We finished it with it in late November, but we actually recorded Sasha only in uh, late February. So it took us like six months to prepare and organize the recording. Uh, but at the same time, the actual recording took place just over two days. What it takes to make a song, it's a good story. I don't know, just like, like awesome guitars, awesome bass, awesome drum, just like, like great sounding music and rock and roll. That's my own. Like, yeah, it's all about the danger. Rock and roll comes from a dangerous place, I think, and the there's no, emulates it. yeah, there's yeah, no, there's, there's no more dangerous place than Dogtown, it seems. Yeah. Yeah. So of course we'd be rocking that stage. Yeah. And improving. And yeah, this, the wonderful story, it's inspiration. We, we got some from the anime, we got some from the game, and luckily we got these amazing musicians. Yeah, you know, got each other. We're stoked to be a part of Cyberpunk Phantom Debate. Yeah, thank you so much. Hare Nemuri des. To itadaita mitsu no shisumon ni kotaete ikitai to omaimasu. Kore wa jibun ni totte wa shujinko no B no sonzai sono mono da to omotte ite Cyberpunk o play shite iru aida zutto sono B ni waうん、ところ<笑> <rire> bonjour, je suis Paka, je suis le chanteur de Cœur Noir. Et bonjour, je suis Jérémy, euh, guitariste de Cœur Noir, instrumentiste de Cœur Noir. Voilà. Cœur Noir. Voilà. Alors, euh, bah, moi j'ai toujours fait de la musique, aussi petit que je m'en souvienne. J'ai un père musicien, donc c'était euh, assez simple euh, d'avoir accès à ça. J'ai découvert vraiment la production musicale avec Music 2000 sur PlayStation que j'adorais, je faisais mes petits morceaux et tout ça là-dessus. Et après je me suis mis à la guitare. Et là c'était le coup de foudre. Euh, moi j'ai commencé assez tardivement et un peu par hasard. Euh, mais du coup, bah, plus dans le chant. Euh, c'était beaucoup d'infos au début. Et petit à petit j'ai eu envie bah, d'avoir de, des choses un peu plus sérieuses. De me faire des concerts et d'avoir de quelque chose de plus concret on va dire. Et donc, euh, bah, pareil, j'ai fait pas mal de petits groupes. Et, euh, et le dernier en date, du coup, qui était Quasar, euh, le groupe avec lequel euh, on s'est euh, rencontré. Mm -hmm. Il y a comment Well, cyberpunk identity. I forgot one. <laughs> Wait, again. My name is Gabriela Peshkova, and I work here in CD Projekt Red as a graphic design specialist. Cyberpunk already has its own identity and creating individual covers was a challenging yet exciting task. Uh, there was a whole team of us working on it and we had to create individual covers 
while keeping it kind of in a world setting. Not using the identity of cyberpunk itself, like losing the yellow color, losing the, the signature assets, if I would say, that we're normally using for uh, media communication, but instead creating something that looks like it could be created in the cyberpunk world itself. So it was, it was challenging yet very creative and I enjoyed this task very much. Hi, my name is Inga. I'm design producer in marketing department in CD Projekt Red. It wasn't developed in our department. Uh, it was develop developed by developers team. Uh, so this is something that, uh, that we used actually. And of course we need to be in line what was, uh, what was already, already prepared. Um, regarding the songs, well, it was super important to check all the lyrics and uh, also to make translations from some languages uh, because we got like songs in Japanese or in Korean and we need to understand what is the topic of the song and uh, how to align the cover design. So if you have like romantic ballads, we should be aligned with uh, with this. Uh, so actually, it was pretty fun. Uh, I was translating some of the songs uh, before we get the before we get the lyrics from the band, and it was pretty nice. Like having our stuff translated into the game is the best feeling ever. <laughs> Because you're always like, you know, like you're creating stuff and you doing cool stuff, but it's like you're always flying around the game. You're kind of like, oh, this is nice, you know. And then when you finally have something in the game, it's like, hell yeah, like, <laughs> there's my, there's my uh, things I, I worked on and I'm proud of it. So definitely super cool. <laughs> The most inspire, inspiring thing uh, in Grola FM project for us were actually lyrics of the songs uh, and like bands themselves and of course visual identity of uh, cyberpunk. Um, tracks it themselves definitely influenced the design. I was in charge of two of them and sorry if I will pronounce it wrong, but I was designing the kill shot from just to Okay, I'm sorry <laughs> if I butchered it. And uh, do or dive uh, from the group No World. One of them was more like a, the kill shot was more like a rap kind of song, and No World was more like dance kind of very hyper song. So it was two completely different genres, and I had to look at it from completely two different views. I try to definitely take way more inspiration from not only like lyrics, but also I was looking for branding of those groups or singers to see what they already did, what's their color scheme, what's the vibe like. I wanted to match their style even in the graphic design because it's their song. It should still be translated into the cyberpunk world. And I hope they will like it. <laughs> so yeah, that was an experience. And we really hope that all of you enjoy jumping into the Phantom Liberty and blasting of your speakers to the sounds of Growl FM once the expansion hits um, September 26th. Enjoy. Mm -hmm.